to see you this morning. Good to see you this morning in new life. Uh, tell the person next to you, I'm glad you are sitting next to me. Now, if they said it like this, I'm glad you're sitting next to me. They're not glad. They're not glad. They're making it up. Turn to the person on the other side and say like, like you mean it. I'm glad you're sitting next to me. Look at these guys. They, they don't speak English or they don't know each other. Like, uh, we're, I'm glad you're here this morning. All right. So if you have your Bible, let's go to the gospel according to John chapter 9. And in this uh, scripture, there is a story about a blind man. And I want to convey to you that all of us have a story. Every single one of us has a story. Some of you have a sad story. And if you have a sad story, Jesus can and will change your story. Is there anybody here that Jesus has changed your story? Amen. Amen. All right. Last week, last week we started uh, this two-week uh, series called Difference Makers. And we told you that God wants you to make a difference. You can make a difference in, in someone's life. And uh, we told you that you have to believe that God or that Jesus still changes lives. Yeah. Yes. And then we told you that God wants to use you to make a difference in somebody else's life. Yeah. So last week, remember we gave you two invitations for you just to either invite your family members or invite someone randomly. So in this service, in this service, uh, about two or three o'clock in the afternoon, I receive a text for, from one of the young ladies from the, our church. I don't know exactly the reason why, but I do know that she texts that she went to Randall's last week. And some guy that's working there, I guess he's the guy that pulls in those uh, shop carts. She gave him an invitation. And she says, you know what, I just, I just want to invite you to our church. And I don't know the whole story. I haven't talked to her. I don't know if she's here this morning or she, maybe she's back at Randall's. Um, <laughs> but but um, she, uh, the, I don't know the, the whole conversation. She only texts, she says, the guy said he hadn't eaten in several days. And uh, I didn't have much money, but the little that I had, I gave to him. So I'm going to Randall's after the service. And now, the guy will not only remember what she gave to him, but she, he will remember that someone was willing, a stranger, to give him an invitation. Maybe he'll come, maybe he won't. But God will use something as small as a small invitation to begin to tug at somebody else's heart. All right? So you can make a difference. And you have a story that God wants to use to make a difference. Say with me, God, God. use my story story. to make a difference. difference. Father, this morning, I thank you for everyone that is here. I realize that not everybody here has a relationship with you, Jesus. But I just pray that those that have not started a relationship with you, Through the story of this man that we're going to elaborate, we're going to teach this morning that your Holy Spirit will tug at their heart and convince them that you want to change their life and you want to change their story. For the rest of us, God, that have already begun a relationship with you, help us to continue to walk with you and walk with us, God. We need you. And I just pray, God, that we will realize that you not only saved us or changed us or transformed us to attend church, but you want us to be the church outside this walls because there are people that need to hear from someone that if you were able to change our life and change our history, you are able to change anyone else's life. So I pray, God, use our story to make a difference in somebody else's life. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said, amen. Amen. Your story is a powerful tool that God will use to lead others to faith in Christ. But like a gift that never gets open, 
Your story, if it is not shared, cannot serve the purpose it was meant for. If you don't tell others what God has done in your life, he can never use you to impact someone else. Now, the story that we are going to see this morning, because we're going to see it, is in John chapter 9. And this is the story of a man that was born blind. We don't know his name. We don't know the situation that caused him the blindness. We don't know if his mom was sick. We, don't, we only know that he was blind. But we also know that Jesus opened up his eyesight. Now, in the Bible, there are many stories. And you're, you're going to realize that the stories that are in the Bible, the main character is never the person with the problem or with the issue. The main character is Jesus that shows up in the life of that person. And in the story of your life, you're not the main character. Jesus is the main character of your life. So please see the story of this man and how Jesus made a difference in his life and how Jesus wants to make a difference in your life. Master, who did sin? This man or his parents said he was born blind. Neither had this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent to me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world.
Is this not he that sat and begged? This is he. No, he is like him. I am he. How were thine eyes opened? A man that is called Jesus made clay and anointed mine eyes and said unto me, Go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed, and I received sight. Where is he? I know not. How did you receive your sight? He put clay upon mine eyes, and I washed, and do see. This man is not of God, because he keepeth not the Sabbath day. How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? What sayest thou of him? That he hath opened thine eyes. He is a prophet. Go bring his parents. Is this your son, who thou sayest was born blind? How then doth he now see? We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. But by what means he now seeth, we know not. Or who hath opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age, ask him. He shall speak for himself. Give God the praise. We know that this man, Jesus, is a sinner. Whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, that whereas I was blind, now I see. So if you are a follower of Jesus, you have a story just as powerful as this blind man. See, one time you were also blind, but thank God, now you see. Amen. The, the author of Amazing Grace was, used to be a slave trader. And when he had an encounter with Christ, he stopped being in the business of selling slaves. Because he realized himself he was a slave to sin all this time. And when he wrote Amazing Grace, he simply said, I once was blind, but now I see. I once was lost, but now I am found. Because all of us in our lives were either born in sin or all of us were born blind. But like this man, that Jesus opened up his eyes. Thank God that one day Jesus opened up your eyes. And I thank God that one day Jesus opened up my eyes to see that he had a different life for me. So let me quickly tell you three key truth about your story. Number one, the first key about your story, it's that it's inarguable. Your story, it's inarguable. In other words, no one can argue with what God has done in your life. Now, if God has not done nothing in your life, if God is not present in your life, then your story, they can argue with you. But if God like this man, the story of this man, notice this. When you read the context in your free time, read, read the Gospel of John. Some said, it looked like him. Others said, it is him. And he simply said, it is I. When they asked him, who was it that opened up your eyes? He simply said, you know, I was blind. The man named Jesus, he didn't know Jesus. That's why he said, simply the man Name Jesus. And at the end of this chapter, you realize that he finally has an encounter with Jesus. So when he is taken to the religious leaders and they're arguing with him, if Jesus was a sinner, that he was not sin from God, he says, think what you think. I only know that I was blind, but now I see. In other words, it didn't matter who would argue with him. No one can argue with what God has done in your life. Now, the truth is this. The truth is this. This past week, I had to attend two funerals, and I had to pray with someone else that lost a loved one. But I remember that when I was baptized 34, 35 years ago, and every time my pastor would baptize someone in our church, he would pray for us, and he would give us this recommendation, and he would say this. Not that I want you to die, 
But live for God like if truly God changed your life. Because I don't want to lie about you when you die. I don't want to lie about you when I have to do your funeral. If this morning you were arrested for being a Christian, is there enough evidence in your life to be accused as a Christian? Or when you are being persecuted, they would say, no, he does, there, there's no evidence of whatsoever that he's truly been born again. Or is, are you someone that simply shows up at church when you have a need? Or you simply shows up because you're looking for someone else in your life, but you're not really looking for Jesus? See, because people come to church for many different reasons. But why are you a Christian? Why? Because today, anybody, anybody can get baptized. Anybody can carry a Bible. Y'all are silent. <laughs> Jesus. Either your team lost yesterday or you already have faith that your team is losing today. Because when I mention your team, you're more excited. But the truth is this. When God changes your life, it don't matter who argues with you. Only you know that truly God has done something in your life. So it don't matter who might argue with you. Let them argue. Only you know what God has done in your life. So number one, you're... Story is inarguable. Number two, your story is interesting. The people in your life will be interested in your story. This man that was blind, that was born blind, first of all, it was his parents that were impacted by the miracle, by the transformation, by the miracle that he received from Jesus. Why? Because his mom had carried him for nine months. And when he was born, the Bible specifically says that he was born blind. So imagine all his life, his parents dealing with this issue, with this problem, with this predicament in his life that he was born blind. So when they bring his parents in, he simply said, look, he's old enough, ask him. And when they asked him, he says, he simply would answer, all I know is that I was blind, but now I see. Maybe to the religious leaders, his miracle was not interesting. But to his parents, it was very interesting. And see, there are people that know you. There are people that have seen your predicaments. There are people that have seen what you've gone through. And when God changes your life, it is those people that your story will be interested to them. Amen. Maybe not to everybody. Maybe CNN and ABC and CBS and Telemundo and Univision. They will never appear at your doorstep to interview you to find out about your story. Maybe... They will never write a book of your history, of your story. But the truth is this. Nobody has to interview us. Nobody has to write a story of our, of our story. We know without a question, without no doubt, that God has changed us. And if our story is not interested to anybody else, it should be interested to you. Because you were once blind, but now you see. You were once lost, but now you're found. And number three, not only is your story inarguable and it's interesting, your story is an investment. Amen. Let me tell you why your story is an investment. First of all, you only invest in something that you know that is going to produce and is going to get, give you results. Yeah. Let me repeat that again. If you had the mentality of an investor, you would not invest in something that is going down. You are not going to invest in an Enron that you know is going to go down. You're going to invest in a company. You're going to invest in, a, in stock that you know that's going to give you dividends, that you know is going to be of your interest. I mean, you don't, you're not just going to invest your money, your time on just anything or anyone. You hear what I said? Yeah. Now, why am I telling you this? Because God was willing to invest in you and invest in me. Why did he invest? He invested his son. He invested the best thing that he ever had. 
Now, God not only invests in you, God sent other people into your life to invest in you. They invested time, they invested money, they invested a lot of patience. Well, you might say, where are they? Your parents. (laughs) Every time my kids ask me for money, he says, Caleb, do you know that I have a ledger where I'm keeping count of everything that I'm sending you? Because when you become a millionaire, I want my money back. (laughs) With interest. Um, You know, I'm joking with him. But can you imagine God, you calling up God and saying, God, I I need a miracle. And God telling you, okay, I'm going to do it. but But I want it back with interest. See, God is not like that. The truth is, God invested in you in spite of the fact that you're human, in spite of the fact that you're weak, in spite of the fact that I'm weak, in spite of the fact I'm... God invested in you in spite of the fact that he might, he knew that you might fail. And he still loved you and he still invested. So people invested in us even when they didn't see our full potential. So... If others have invested in you, your story is an investment. God will multiply your effort to connect with others and to make a difference in somebody else's life. Now, let me conclude by telling you three key elements on how to tell your story. Three key elements of how to tell your story. Remember, like a gift that never gets opened, a story that never gets told, Cannot serve its purpose if it is not shared. So this is the first key element if you're going to tell your story. Number one, you have to confirm your story. What do I mean by confirming? Your story has to be real. Your story has to be true. Do you remember that group? Help me, those of you. Mini, vanilla, vanilla, vanilla. What was her name? That was it? Mindy? See, y'all know more about them about the Bible. No, I'm sorry. Mini Vanilli. Do y'all remember them? Some of you said, who are they? They're old. Some of you kids don't remember them. They were singers that made a CD that was not their voice. They were only Lip singing. They were fake. And people are tired of fake stories and fake people. Sooner or later, the truth comes out. So if you are going to be a true Christian, don't be a fake. People are tired of fakes. Can I tell you something? God never makes fakes. Only God's ori- God only makes originals. In other words... You're, don't die a copy when God made you an original. So if you're going to be a believer, a follower of Christ, be a believer and follower of Christ. And if you're not going to follow Christ, well, don't say that you're following Christ. Well, I'll go to new life. Okay, but do you have new life? I go to church, okay, but is the church in you? Because it's easy to be a Christian on Sundays. You got your tie, you got your night dress, you got your nice shoes, your night pants, whatever. You got even you even have your smile. God bless you. God bless you. How you doing? Good to see you. <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing with you. See, before you can share your story. What makes a difference is not the words that you say. It's how you live. Because it's easy to say, I'm a Christian. But is there enough evidence that backs up what I'm saying? Now, can I tell you that being a Christian is not only a Sunday thing? Some of you want benefits, but you only want to show up on Sunday. How are you going to get benefits at work if you only show up one day? And see, some of you wanted Christmas only one day. See, I'm, I'm talking today. I'm being real. I'm being real. Because the truth is this. Living for Christ is not about you. It's all about him. When you surrender, and you have to confirm. Is, is your 
Is your change real? Now, I'm not telling you this to make you doubt and to question you. Some of you, I don't know. <laughs> I'm doing this to challenge you to make sure that you got the real deal. Are you perfect? Do we expect perfect Christians here at church? Yes, we do. <laughs> I wanted y'all to answer no. Gotcha. We don't. Nobody's perfect here, but we're forgiven. So if God has forgiven you, don't go back to what you used to do. Live for God. Now, because what's going to impact your friends and your family members is not that you're saying, not that you get baptized tomorrow and then next week or two months from now or three months from now or a year from now you go back. What's going to impact them is that your consistent walk with God. So if your testimony is going to be powerful and it's going to be used by God, the first thing you have to confirm that truly God has made a difference and God has changed your life. Is there anyone here that is not afraid to say, yes, I'm one of those that God changed this. Jesus transformed their life. Jesus changed my story. Jesus changed the history, my destiny of my life. Number two, not only do you have to confirm your story, you have to complete your story. Write out your story. Write out your testimony. And this is what your testimony, your story has to say. All right? Number one, it's in there. Your life before Christ. What was your life before Christ? I don't know what your life was before Christ. And how... You came to Christ. What were the things that God used? What was the situations that God used to bring you to Christ? And then your life since becoming a follower of Christ, becoming a Christian. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become New. Let me read it again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Everything becomes new. Yeah. All right. Now, let me show you this. A couple of weeks, we're going to celebrate Christmas, and we're going to be talking about Christmas, and we're going to talk about the birth of Jesus and all this. Let me tell you this quickly. Historians, when they write history, history is divided Either they call it B.C. or A.D., okay, before Christ. And then history is divided when Jesus is born. Now everything that is written after Jesus' birth and burial and death is after Christ. Say with me, B.C., before Christ, or A.C., after Christ. All right? Well, not only is history divided or separated when Jesus was born your life is also is different when Jesus is born in your life people talk about you how you were before Christ and people talked about you how your life is now different after Christ now if Jesus was never been born in your life your story is still the same before Christ because when Christ comes into your life not only does he change your story, your, your story is inarguable. No one, can dis, no one can argue what God has done in your life. Your story is interesting because God, Jesus, is interesting. And God, your life is an investment. Amen. So you have to complete your story. Write out your story. Now, when you share your story, share it in two or three minutes. Just quickly say, you know what? I was this before Christ. This is the things that God used for me to come to Christ. And this is how my life is different since I follow Christ now because God does make a difference. Jesus does make a difference in your life. And then number three, number three, commit your story to God. Commit your story to God. What does this mean? What does this mean? Your life, your story is not about you. It's the difference that Jesus has played in your life. Yeah. Let me repeat that again. See, the only reason this blind man appears in the Bible, or this former blind man, 
It's because Jesus healed him, he was able to see. So again, the main character in chapter 9 is not his parents. The main character is not the blind man. The main character is what Jesus did for this man. So in your life, the main character in your life after you receive Jesus will always be Jesus. All right? So when you receive Jesus, truly, God changes your life, changes your destiny. The truth is this. God will always have bigger plans for you than what you have for yourself. God's dreams for you, God's dreams for you, and God's dreams for your family are always bigger than your dreams and always bigger than your plans. So when God begins to fulfill those dreams in your life and God begins to bless you in your life, you never receive the credit. The credit is always to God. See, because I've seen so many people, pastors included, Single men, single women, that God gives them a husband, God gives them a wife, kids. And God blesses them. They have a career. They have the house. They, oh my God, God begins to bless them. And suddenly, they think they have it because of their education or because of what they've done, because they've worked hard. No, 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 no. Please listen to this. It's not because of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's because of God. Yeah. Now, if you don't believe me, get God out of the picture and you will soon realize that you will lose everything. And the only reason you're blessed today. And the only reason you have life today. And the only reason if you've been born again. Is not because of what you did. Is because of what he did. So your story. Your story. Your story. When you share your story. Make sure people see Jesus in your story. Because what makes a difference is not me. It's not you. It's that Jesus made a difference in our life. So let's conclude by reading Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Paul, that had an encounter with Christ, says this in Acts chapter 20, verse 24. And I pray, I pray that this verse becomes a life verse in your life. I pray that this verse becomes a reality, becomes a life verse in your life. So let's read. I'm, we're going to read it three times because I want you to understand it. Paul is saying this and he says... But life is worth nothing unless I use it for doing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus. The work of telling others the good news about God's mighty kindness and love. Let's read it again. But life is worth nothing unless... I use it for doing the work assigned by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about God's mighty kindness and love. One more time. But life is worth nothing unless I use it for doing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus, the work of telling others the good news about God's mighty kindness and love. Let me tell you what Paul is saying. Your life will never have meaning. Your life will truly never have worth unless you use it to do what God wants you to do. And he's saying, my life has no meaning unless I do the work that he assigned me to do. Now, can I tell you that each and every one of us have an assignment from God? I cannot fulfill your assignment. You cannot fulfill my assignment. Do you remember when you were in school and the teacher gave you a homework assignment and you forgot what she told you to do? And you called the wrong friend and your wrong friend told you the wrong assignment and you did the homework, but when you went to school... Even though you had completed the homework, it was the wrong homework. And the sad story is that many of you are going to make it, but you made the wrong, you were working on the wrong assignment. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, you never are truly satisfied simply because you received Christ. You must complete the assignment that God had you to do. 
And our assignment as Christians is not only to show up to church. Paul says, my assignment is to tell others the good news about God's mighty kindness and God's mighty love towards us. So in other words, I'm glad you come to church. He young is glad he comes to church. I'm glad you, you go to a life group. And I'm glad you show up to eat. So, somebody say, yeah, amen. But your story can make a difference in somebody else's life. So this morning, I want you to welcome, I want you to give a round of applause. And we're going to have our testimony. We're going to hear a story this morning, how God changes people's life. Come on, David. Hey, hey everyone. Uh, I'm just going to share uh, a little bit about uh, my story. Um, when I first became a Christian, I was a little embarrassed of it, not because of anything that I did in the past or anything, but more so because it didn't feel as, dram- excuse me, as dramatic as um, a lot of stories that I had heard before. Um, so I grew up uh, with some loving parents. My mom's back there. She's awesome. Uh, I grew up with some loving parents in a, uh, in a Catholic home. My mom took myself, my little brother, and my little sister um, even though they're both taller than me, <laughs> uh, she, she she would take us to St. Patrick's Church every every Sunday, and we would go and uh, we would we would sit down and we'd we'd probably embarrass her because we'd sit there and you know mess with each other. And if you don't know, in a Catholic church, it's it's very quiet and it's um, there's a lot of echo. And so whenever you know just little whispers that we would do, you could hear it. But anyways. Um, I did that, and I went through some of the sacraments there of the, of the Catholic Church, which is, you know, you get, bap- you get baptized when you're an infant, and um, they have your first communion when you're around first or second grade, and then you get confirmed when you're about around high school, around ninth or tenth grade. Um, and in addition to that, so I was, I was kind of aware of God. I knew who Jesus was and didn't really know much about the Holy Spirit. That was kind of like, no, I don't know, you know. Um, and... In addition to that, I was always kind of like a, a, a rule follower, just by nature, just kind of how I was. Um, so I, I didn't really um, do some of, uh, like I wasn't in a, a party scene. Uh, I, my language was pretty clean. Um, I really, I was like what most, by most standards, kind of like a good kid. But it didn't really matter because being good isn't what gets us to heaven, right? Um, and so... Uh, in eighth grade, uh, I, I went from Odyssey Academy, and I transferred to Weiss Middle School, um, and, yeah, whoop, whoop, and, uh, and I was there, and um, I was actually in, a, in an algebra class, and they said, oh, dang, you're not smart enough to do this, so you got to go to this other class, and so I went to this other class, and I actually met um, Pastor's oldest son, David, and um, I didn't he, didn't, he didn't tell me he was a pastor's kid or anything. I mean, we just, we hung out. We were both on the B team in basketball, you know. Uh, we, we played basketball together. Um, we skateboarded together. He introduced me to Juwan. Uh, so we were like the three amigos for a while. You know, we hung out, and Juwan had this van. We'd go, and we'd do all sorts of stuff or whatever. And um, <laughs> I, just, I just heard that. Sorry, guys. Sorry to, blow our, sorry to blow our cover. No, anyways. Um, uh, we, okay, so, um, so, we did, so we did that. We were, we were uh, I lost my train of thought. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Um, I didn't really have a, a search for God. I didn't feel like I had a need for grace because I felt like I was a good person, right? Like, I didn't really feel like I needed God in a sense, but he was there just in case, right? Um, but so I entered, David would always invite me, and I would never really came, but around high school time I started coming, and then I came in through the youth group, and during that time the youth group was kind of in a transition, so we had a guy from, uh, he was kind of like a youth group church planner, if you will, he came down, he was kind of helping to set a foundation here at the church for a youth group, and um, through that, eventually, I don't know, I just remember one time we were in worship and youth, and I just remember like looking around, and I was like, I mean, I, I've been coming for about a year or so, and I was like, I think I'm... I think I'm a, like a Christian now, you know? I was like, this, like, I, I, I want to be here. I want to know about God. I want to know, I want to be near God. And um, it wasn't like a dramatic, like, oh, but I just remember, like, that moment of, ah, oh, I remember that. And then um, I think what really hit it off was that I, 
I realize that grace, I think we all know that grace is something that we don't deserve, right? But it's also something that you can't deserve either. But what I mean is that um, so often we look at all the bad things that we've done. It's like, oh, I don't deserve. But me, I was on the other side because I was such like, a good kid. I was like, of all the good things I've done, I thought, well, yeah, surely I should get heaven. Um, but so I was kind of like on the other end of the spectrum to where I was, uh, I needed, it didn't matter what I did. I, it didn't matter how good I was. It doesn't matter how bad anybody was. It was, a, it was about, like Pastor saying, about what Jesus has done. And I, when I realized that, it, that and when I realized that grace, um, I was, I, that's what really, I think, changed my life. That it, it wasn't, David, you're, you can be as good as you want, but if it's, if, if, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter if, you, if, it, if it's not, um, if you're not believing in what Jesus has done for, for you because it's something outside of us. Um, and so, you know, years went on, and after, you know, I guess being in, in church for so long, um, I, there's been, I'm not, I, I'm not perfect in life, uh, it's, it hasn't been perfect, but it's it's been it's been good. I've, I've been I'm enjoying uh, living under the blessing of God, and um, I found my wife here. Uh, my my mom my, my mom my mom attends now, um, and uh, it's just, it, it's it's just so amazing to to be man just to be a part of what God is doing, and knowing that I was never searching for Him. I'm not gonna lie, I never really searched for God, but uh, He came after me, and. Uh, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing, I mean, to, to, to know and to believe and to understand. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm so grateful to God for that. So that's my story. Um, I hope it impacted you in some way, somehow. I don't, um, but, yeah, so thanks for listening, guys. Yes, come on, give it up for God and David's life. Now, I want to finish using two things that he said. Number one, he said, I never felt that my story was as dramatic as others. It doesn't have to be. That's one thing. The other thing that he said was this. I wasn't searching for God, but he was searching for me. So regardless, if you're on the spectrum that I was in, that I was bad, and I needed him. Or you're in the spectrum where David was, where you felt all your life. I'm good. I don't cuss. I don't, I don't steal. I've never killed no one. It is not if you're bad. It is not if you're good. It is when Jesus comes into your life that you're saved by grace, by faith, not as your works, but it's a gift from God. So that no one can boast. All right. Now, I know David's story. He used to come to my house with my kid. Okay. Now, what amazes me of his story is this. That both of my kids look highly up to him. Not because he was a drug dealer. Not because he killed three cats. Because everybody thinks that you have to have had this, oh, he said it, this dramatic. But when in, me and my family talk about people that God has made a difference in their life, both of my kids, my oldest kid, his friend David, and Caleb look highly up to them because how God transformed him. And now he has been able to serve God. Now his mom comes to church. His mom is a life group leader. Because you'll never know what God will do with your story to change somebody else's life. So, David, thank you because you've, 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 you've been a blessing to my family. And thank you because you've been a blessing to someone on my staff. problem is somebody is influencer so let me conclude this morning you're here this morning you could be in the spectrum where I was I was a drug dealer I was addicted to drugs and I needed God or you can be in the spectrum where he was he's never done drugs he's a good kid but whatever you're at you still need God in your life 
So if this morning you would like God to change your life, to change the history of your life, all you have to do is say, God, do for me what you did for the blind man. Open up my eyes. Forgive me of my sins. Do for me what you did for that young man. Do for me what you did for pastor. And if that's you, all I'm going to ask is for you to stand. If you would like to receive God, if you like God to change your story, as a matter of fact, I'm going to ask everybody to stand. Everybody to stand. Everyone. And if you're here, and if you would like God to change your story, you've already stood up. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. If you would like God to change your story, I'm just going to ask you to come out of your seat. I will meet you up here, and I will pray for you like they prayed for me 35 years ago. And what God did for me and what God did for the young man, he will do for you this morning. Is there anyone this morning that would like to receive Christ? I told you I would meet you here. Come on, give this person a round of applause, this family. Anyone else? Anyone else? Come on, anyone else? You need God. You need God in your life. Come on. Yes. Anyone else? Come, come, come. 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 God loves you. God's been waiting for you. Come, come. Come this morning. Yes. Hallelujah. Come. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. You're here this morning. Uh, obviously, some of you I do know. Some of you I don't know. But it doesn't matter if I know you or not. What matters is that God loves, God knows you and God loves you. And God has had all this amazing plan for your life. Some of you have gone through a lot of pain, a lot of hurt in your life. But God is here this morning to not only forgive you, but to heal your pain. And the other thing is, whatever you've done, whatever you've done, I don't need to know, but whatever you've done, this morning, God will forgive you. And the Bible says that all those things that you've done will be part of your past it will be forgotten by God and you should also forget it because what makes you is not your past what makes you is that today you make the decision to receive Christ and I pray that from today on your future is going to be brighter your pl God's plans for your life is going to be awesome so right here just bow your head and I want you to say this prayer out loud Say, dear God, this morning, today, I realize that I need you in my life. Thank you because you've been looking for me. And I prayed this morning that you forgive me of my sins. Not only do you change, I pray that you change my story. I pray that from this day on, you changed my life. The Bible says that if I believe with my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord, I shall be saved. So this today, I believe with my heart and I confess with my mouth that you forgive me and that you receive me and then I receive you in my life. I pray that from this day forward, you help me to live for you all the days of my life. God, forgive me, and I forgive those that have hurt me in my past. Help me to bury everything from my past today. And God, I pray that your will and that your plans for my life will be fulfilled from this day forward. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Father, thank you. Thank you. Father, I thank you for each and every one of these men and women that are up here this morning. 
that are of their own free will, they decided to come up front. And I pray, God, that through your Holy Spirit, you will help them, change them, transform them, and help them to live for you all the days of their life. Bless them, Father. Guard them, protect them, and just help them to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray.